Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Marintau from 2009. Marintau is the first collaboration between writer-director Gareth Evans and Iko Uwas. Before they made The Raid and The Raid 2, this is the film that started them off. And as someone who's quite a fan of the first two Raid movies, I kind of wanted to see the other film they worked on together, the film they worked on before, Where Did They Come From? And that's a kind of a natural cinephile thing to do do is you get into a particular director star collaboration or any sort of director and you hear they have other movies and you of course want to see them because you like the previous movies why wouldn't you and that's kind of what led me down the road of finally seeing Marintau is that I don't know when the next Gareth Evans movie is going to come out so why don't I at least see his other martial arts film now this is actually Gareth Evans second film his first film is Footsteps which is more of a thriller but this is his first martial arts film what started him off and working with Iko Uwas. I just wanted to see what that was like before the Raid films. And certainly it's a lot rougher, that's to be expected, as they didn't have as much money, and clearly they had a lot more experiences behind them and learned a lot more from making this film, obviously, to make even better films with the Raid movies. It doesn't feel as amazing and awe-inspiring, but it's still a very good, cheap action movie and definitely shows a very promising director and a promising star. If I had seen this film in 2009 when it came out, at least in America and Indonesia and various other countries, I would definitely want to see further into their filmographies. I wouldn't feel as passionate about it as I do now that I've seen the Raid films, but it does show a very promising director who at least gets what is important to a low-budget action movie, and that's staying with your little tight little plot and making that film solely about that and picking your action scenes and shooting them well. There's not a lot of cuts in these action sequences which I love that's one of the best things about Gareth Evans is he knows how to shoot an action sequence with very little cutting they're just marvelous to look at it's like Iko Uwas and Gareth Evans complement each other very well with his editing style which doesn't have as many cuts as a usual action director and Iko Uwas's amazing choreography though I don't think he did as much choreography in this but maybe that's why they didn't do that again because in the raid films he did do most of the choreography it's still a wonder to behold but obviously you're going to be comparing this to the Raid films, which is kind of unfair because this is a lot cheaper. It does show me that glimmer of hope that these guys could go on to make even cooler and better and the promise of seeing better action martial arts movies to come. Iko Uwas plays Yuta, who is leaving his small town on a Marintau, which is when you leave your small town to go off and travel and have life experiences so you can come back and be a richer human being. And on his Marintau, he's going to go to Jakarta Carta to teach people the distinct form of martial arts, which are in both this film and the two Raid movies, which is Salant, which I, if I'm mispronouncing, I very much apologize. So he goes to Jakarta on a bus, and then he goes to the apartment he's supposed to be teaching out of, and he realizes that building doesn't even exist anymore, and it's in rubble. So he ends up sleeping in kind of one of those cement tunnel things at night, and kind of just walking around Jakarta looking for a place, hopefully, to teach his form of martial arts, until he has his wallet stolen by a young boy. He chases him to get his wallet back and then he runs into his sister who is being harassed by a guy who runs a strip club and then Yuda fights him and then the brother and sister see that he can possibly protect him because she is constantly being forced into prostitution and they are both very very poor and he helps them out and helps them fight against these bad guys who are trying to put her into prostitution and force her into the illegal sex trade because of the poverty that she is facing and Iko Uwas of course will not stand for this and constantly is fighting the bad guys sometimes not so successfully sometimes very successfully in a barrage of various sequences to fight for both her honor and fight against them possibly taking her away into the sex trafficking industry looking at this film in the context of right now and having seen the other raid films as probably most people have at this point if you're seeing Marintel the thing is you have to look at the time it was released and the time this was released was the beginning of video on demand action movies and that was a really cheap time for cheap action movies which sounds silly but if you watch a cheap action movie on video on demand now there's actually some money behind it it's like they actually spent money to make a video on demand action movie now usually those films are released theatrically overseas Marintau feels very cheap it doesn't have as many cheap hallmarks there's not as many like cheap CG effects there is one sequence that has one and the video Gareth Evans uses to shoot this film feels a lot cheaper and 
not really the same kind of cinematography we're used to from the Raid films. Those are dark and dreary and the colors are like muted. And this film's like way too colorful. It's way too video looking. The colors really pop. The skin tones look weird sometimes. And it just feels like cheaper. Like they didn't have a lot of money to make it. So they had to shoot it on better HD at the time. I'm assuming they shot this around 2008. And that's certainly jarring from when you look at it now. When I was watching it, I was like, is this the right movie? Or my color settings right? Like I checked a lot of times and they were right. But you can tell that they basically learned from their mistakes from this film. Now Gareth Evans, who is actually credited as G.H. Evans in this film for reasons that make no sense to me whatsoever. A video on demand action movie, you really need to be simple and quick about it. And you can't have a complex plot because most people are tuning out until the action sequences happen. That's kind of the complaint of all of Gareth Evans' films is that the plot's never as amazing as the action sequences are. And I would definitely love this film in that too, but The Raid and The Raid 2 have much more interesting plots than this film does. This film, it's so elementary in some ways. That's certainly true of the other Gareth Evans Eco US films, but I think this film just feels like it could be an old western. It feels like they've been making this film for like a hundred thousand years or something like that. A cowboy who leaves town to have an experience. I certainly think it works for the film and its simplicity kind of works for it and that definitely works for video on demand action. You don't want to have too much complications and convolute the plot whatsoever. And Gareth Evans definitely gets that. I think it's what makes it such a fun martial arts film. Every action sequence has a point where he's fighting the bad guys. There's no like, oh, well maybe these guys aren't good and they're having a disagreement kind of stupid fight. They are very distinct and simple and black and white, but it almost like he lets the plot play out as kind of a cheap action movie to really focus on the amazingness of the fight sequences. They feel a little more held back, like sometimes when they're fighting in certain rooms, it feels like like certain areas they're like not going near because they don't want to break anything. But there's still some really crazy sequences there's a lot of people getting impaled by like long poles if you're really into that i guess this is the movie for you and then also there's an awesome sequence where he's finding these guys and he moves a couch like someone pushes it but he's moving it with his hands like this to the back of the couch it was like if i move a couch i need to take a nap on the couch you just moved i'm so tired i'm like i moved a couch couches are heavy but not eco us he can just do it with his hands all willy-nilly like he's some superstar who knows all these great martial arts and he moved couches with his hands like he's like superman whatever there are a lot of awesome action sequences like that and eco us definitely shows that he is an action star to watch in this movie i don't think he picked as good of a role in this film he's trying to be like kind of this naive to the city life kind of guy he's not as good at that and i'm glad it's a role he has not continued to do he's definitely the best person in the whole movie there's a lot of bad acting in this film particularly the villain who's like so over the top although they do have an awesome fight scene at the end together the fight sequence in this film are are worth kind of getting through the cliched parts and just feeling like you're watching a regular B movie. And that kind of made me thinking about when I and most people have complained about Gareth Evans, the best part of his movies are always the action sequences, but I've seen so many video on demand films and B action films that it kind of makes me go, well, how is he different from any other action movie? That's every action movie. You're just like waiting around until you see the awesome action sequence. In this film, it kind of made me think about that. And I think The Raid's actually a very well-structured, well-plotted film. And same with The Raid too. Marantau isn't like that because Marantau just feels like he's kind of like trying to just simply make a decent enough martial arts movie in the video on demand vein. And I've seen worse ones of this period. I don't think the late 2000s to the beginning of the 2010s, teens, whatever, the decade we're in now, we're not a great time for video on demand action into what we have now, which is actually a, a really good time for video on demand action movies. But that was really kind of the baseline that brought it up to become what it is now. And he's just kind of making like a basic genre type of movie and that goes throughout all his films just making a basic genre martial arts film but he kind of plays off that in a lot of ways in this one it feels like he's going more low-key with it which is probably best to do when you're new to a particular genre he clearly knows a lot about that in samurai movies and westerns and he still has a real tight control over his storytelling and plot in this film you don't get bored by the plot now i do think this film is a little too long particularly the end it just 
feels like it keeps going. It's like, what the hell is going on? That this film is a little more haphazard, definitely has how distinct and pointed the rest of the Raid films are. You feel like he knows what he's doing a lot more. This almost feels like more of an experiment to just simply make the regular kind of video on demand action movie, but just do it well. And I think Marantau for the time does it very well. He does use the camera very well, particularly in the action sequences. With the action sequences, it almost feels like they shot it chronologically because it feels like as it goes on, the action sequences seem to get not only better and the choreography gets better and Eco Uwas gets better, but they're shot better and there's less cutting. At the beginning, there's more cutting, but by the end, it's like really inspired and really well shot and really shows a really great martial arts director. And it takes a while to get to those really, you know, unfortunately. But Marantau, I think it was an interesting thing to see Gareth Evans and Eco Uwas before they did the Raid movies. In fact, this is the first time I've seen a film by either of them isn't in the Raid franchise. And I kind of was curious, what were their beginnings? And I think their beginnings showed a lot of promise. I almost kind of get why if these guys were like, hey, we want to make a movie like the Raid, how they got so much more money. I mean, it's kind of almost unbelievable when I watch it a little bit. Marantau is probably just for fans. It's definitely an entertaining B action movie in the best way that Gareth Evans knows how to bring that to you, which is a lot of fun frankly. I have a lot of fun with his movies and I have kind of a little bit of fun with this one. Not as much. This is the first Gareth Evans Eco Uwas film I didn't see for the first time in theaters. I don't know how much that would have actually helped this movie. It feels like it would have been hindered no matter what because the, the filmmaking is just not that, that expertise they have now. And that's kind of the thing is like you're definitely going to compare it but it feels like they kind of learn. This is them learning the ropes of action filmmaking and then they could evolve and make an even better movie. This is like the basic kind of action genre film, but they do a basic action martial arts film incredibly well. And they do it so well, they could springboard off of that and understand like, well, if we do a basic plot, we can do X amount of awesome things with that. And they kind of do that. You know, they might've had a shitty villain and a lot of stupid stuff going on in this film and forgettable things, and it might've gone on too long. What they learned off this film and what any director can really learn off doing their first action film, just do the basic kind of action movie and kind of understand it and it felt like they definitely understood what they were doing and I think that's probably what helped them make the raid in the raid too because they understood the ropes of it they understood you know how you could make something like that so then they could evolve and move on and Eco Uwas evolved as a performer and Gareth Evans evolved as a director and we got much more awesome action movies after that so if you have seen Marin Tao and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.